What is going on internet? My name is Lou and I make Linux videos and I put them on the internet. Tonight's video is going to be the first in a series of videos covering the top, I don't know, 10 or 12 things that I think you should do after installing elementary OS Luna. Now, the content that we'll be discussing doesn't necessarily limit itself to elementary. I believe that this is information that could be used across all different distributions, but I found these things particularly essential in enhancing my experience with elementary OS Luna. Now, some of the first videos that I'll be covering will be on the topic of graphics. Now, you may be saying to yourself, you know, graphics issues in Linux, really? Um, you know, these the graphics issues have plagued the platform for many, many years, and it's not Linux's fault. It's really the hardware manufacturers and their lack of really dedication in developing good drivers for the Linux platform. Now, these drivers are getting better, but they're still not where they really need to be. Now, with the onset of the Android platform and NVIDIA kind of getting into the mobile space, as well as Steam for Linux uh, coming out, I think that we'll see in the near future the graphics um, driver development really rocket forward. However, it's been a struggle for a long time. Now, if you're running elementary OS Luna, is when you install Luna and boot into your system, you're going to be using the open source driver. Now I have a NVIDIA uh, GeForce GTX 650. It's a fairly new card. It's not top of the line. It's kind of middle of the road. And you know, when I first installed Luna, the performance was terrible on the graphics end. Now that's not Luna's fault. That's because when you install um, the base system, it's not using a specific configuration for your hardware. It's using a very generic configuration. Now it does detect what uh, graphics cards you're running and again uses the open source driver for that but with a generic configuration. And to show you guys what I'm talking about, I've got a VirtualBox install here. And what we'll do is we're going to put ourselves within the Etsy X11 directory. We're going to list out what's in there. And as you can see, one thing that's missing is a zorg.com file. Now the zorg.com file is basically what um, tells the system um, to, or basically the file used to set all the options for your graphics card is a very simple explanation. Now again, <clears throat> Ubuntu has stopped, which is what is underneath the elementary system. It's based on top of Ubuntu. It stopped using a zorg.com file a few versions ago. So it's using very generic universal settings. If you want the best performance, you really should generate this zorg.com file and we're going to get into later on showing you how to configure that file. So there's a number of ways to do this. You really need to stop this X session and then also stop the um, display manager which in this case is LightDM and then run an XORG configuration. Now if you want to use a keyboard shortcut while your system is up and running it's very simple and I'll include a blog post in the video description below. You basically just hit Control alt f1 type in a command to stop the display manager and then you can run the XOR configuration. I'm going to show you an alternate method that you can use when booting up your machine for the first time. So if we hit shut down and go to restart, while the computer is restarting, the VM is restarting, I want you to continually hit the shift key. This is going to put us in the grub menu. Once we get to the grub menu, we're going to go to previous Linux versions, hit enter. The second option that says recovery mode, select that. Now we're going to boot into recovery mode and it's going to give us a list of options. Now, why might you want to use the open source driver as opposed to the proprietary driver? That's really going to be case specific. I'll tell you why I do. Um, hands down, the proprietary driver gives better performance. However, what it does not allow me to do is this right here, screencasting. The proprietary driver gives me all sorts of issues when screencasting. It drops frames, it'll pause the screencast at random points. The screen will flicker blue and it will give me a really hard time um, when trying to screencast. Now, the performance in terms of the interactivity with my desktop and all and the speed and everything is by far better than the open source driver. The open source driver does not handle 3D as well as um, 
the proprietary but if I want to keep making videos for you guys I needed to really come up with an alternative and of course the open source driver is a good one because it allows me to screencast properly however I needed to get a good configuration in place to increase the performance because it was awful and again not elementary's fault but I needed to generate a specific configuration for my hardware so that's why I'm doing it now this you may want to use the open source driver because of your software philosophy. You may not want to use proprietary software and may want to use the open source driver. That could be another reason. Or you may just have a really old card that doesn't have proprietary support anymore. So there's a number of reason to want number of reasons to want to use the proprietary driver. Um, or the, I'm sorry, the open source driver rather, as opposed to the proprietary. So I'm going to show you guys who who want to use the open source. Um, you know how to get it configured to really be optimized and give you a great you know experience in Luna or another distribution so now that we're here in the recovery menu let's go down to where it says root and drop to root shell prompt we're gonna hit enter now what we need to do from here is we need to mount our file system as read writable so we're gonna do that by typing out mount dash o oops o, space and the word remount comma rw space forward slash that stands for your file system all right now our file systems writable so at this point we're gonna generate a zorg.com file we're gonna do that by uh, typing zorg with a capital X uh, dash and the word configure so as you can see it's generate generated the file zorg.com new so we want to rename this we're gonna do that by using the move command move zorg.conf.new and you're simply going to do zorg.conf now we're going to move this to the proper directory which is etsy x11 using the move command <laughs> it would help if i told uh, uh and put in what file i want to move all right zorg.conf etsy and x11 okay so now that we've moved our new zorg.conf to the etsy x11 directory we're going to type sudo reboot. It's going to bring us back to this main screen and just hit enter on the top option. It's going to bring us to a normal boot process now and it's going to bring us to the uh, login screen. Okay, so here we are at the login screen. You know all as well because X started. And what we'll do now is we'll open up uh, the terminal. We'll put ourselves within the Etsy X11 directory. And now we're gonna list out the contents. And as you can see, we have a wonderful new zorg.conf file. If you type nano zorg.conf, it'll display the contents. And that's it. Now there's further configuring depending on your hardware that, uh, that could be done. You know, and we'll cover that in later videos, but this gives us a base file to work with and we can start adding in all sorts of options. You know, options that will um, get rid of um, video tearing on your desktop, options that will uh, put the monitor to, sl uh, to sleep automatically for you and wake it after a certain amount of time. There's a ton of different options for performance and, and all sorts of things that uh, can be added to this particular file. But, you know, this is the base that you want to start from, especially with the open source driver. Um, you know this is what's going to give you that performance that you need now if you're using the proprietary counterpart of course you know they're going to have GUI applications that are going to help you do this all by point and click you know if you're on Nvidia you have the Nvidia settings if you're on ATI card it's going to give you the catalyst control center uh, which makes things a little bit easier um, knowing what options to add to this file can be a little daunting it causes a lot of uh, Google searches and reading forum posts and reading wikis and you know for you uh, Nvidia uh, users I've got uh, some good stuff coming for you because I have an Nvidia card and I've I've been working with the open source driver and Nvidia and uh, I'm sorry Novu um, options to really improve performance and I really think I've got a killer setup going for me and it may be uh, something that a lot of you can use so you know that's it for this one guys I really hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions as always leave them in the video description below and until next time we'll see you later